okay in the last lecture we have discussed about the analog switch type phase detector so basically a phase detector we have two inputs one is the input signal with a frequency of a phase and second one is vcv output with a frequency of f not and see normally square or rectangular type of waveform here yeah, this is sinusoidal or any other signal this is phase detector this will produce some error signal if you have the phase difference between these two signals as phi so in the last lecture uh, we proved that v is proportional to cos phi and uh, we have discussed two drawbacks of uh, analog switch type phase detector one is this non linear relation that is instead of v is directly proportional to phi it is proportional to cos phi second one is this ve also depends upon the amplitude of this uh, input signal which if we call as vs ve is also proportional to the vs which is undesired to avoid these two problems with the analog switch type phase detector we have to convert this input waveform into constant amplitude type signal such as square or rectangular wave so there are different uh, circuits which uh, converts this type of signals into square or uh, rectangular waves so once uh, if you convert this input signal into constant amplitude signal then this is also square or rectangular wave and vcu output is also square or rectangular wave now because these two are pulse type of the signals we can perform this uh, phase detection using some digital circuits also there are some digital phase detectors so the first digital phase detector is exclusive or based phase detector simply exclusive or gate will act as a phase detector if it take exclusive or gate if i give one signal with a frequency of this fs another signal another signal with a frequency of vcu output f not then this will generate ve error signal so we know that if a and b are the inputs of the signal what will be this ve we see the two table which find out the ve values for different combinations of the a and b 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 Zero zero for exclusive or gate. If the inputs are equal, output is zero. If inputs are different, output is one. So here, if I apply this FS with some frequency, here this is FS signal. and let us assume that the phi is the phase difference between fs and f0 if f0 is this signal
S will differ by a phase angle of phi. So, this difference between these two is phi. Then what will be the output? output V will be. So, here during this portion F naught signal is 0 whereas F s signal is logic 1. So, output is logic 1. During this portion both are ones. So, output is 0. During this portion one of the input signal is at logic 1, other is at logic 1, uh, input signal is at a logic 1, other is at logic 0, so output is 1. So, like that, we will get a pulses like that, you will get this type of waveform at the output of the exclusive OR gate. So, this waveform will be having both the DC component as well as AC component. Because you know that uh, any arbitrary signal can be represented as sum of DC and infinite sinusoidals using Fourier series. So, this also will be having DC component as well as some AC components. So, this AC components can be filtered by using a low pass filter only DC will be left. So, we will get the average value of this. So, the average value of this waveform can be obtained by passing through the low pass filter and uh, selecting the proper cutoff frequency. Now, this DC uh, voltage of this one that is average value of this, this DC value will be applied to the VCO which changes the frequency of the VCO. Now, what will be the range of this uh, DC signal ok and uh, when does this uh, DC signal will be having maximum value? You can easily see that this phi, this is the phi difference. Now, this is having high from this point to this point. If I slightly increase this phi, what happens? So, this width will be increases. If it goes on increasing, this width will be increases until phi is equal to pi. If the difference phi is equal to pi, what type of waveforms will get? We will get something like this. If this is F s, F naught is having phase angle of pi, then this will be having now this phase angle is pi. If you exclude or these two, this is exclude or operation. During this portion, this F naught is 0, whereas F s is 1. During this portion, F s is 0, 
it has f0 is 1 during this portion fs is 1 f0 is 0 so we will get ve signal which is a constant signal so this will be having maximum dc value So, we will get the maximum DC value for phi is equal to pi. So, if I plot the DC voltage as a function of phi phase angle, from 0 it will increase up to pi, again from pi it will decrease. You can see that this is phi is equal to pi. If you further increase this phi, what happens? You will get some phase difference. If I take this at a phase angle of more than pi, then this will be something like instead of becoming this as high here, it will become high after some time. So, because during this portion output is 1, whereas during this portion output is 0. So, you will not get constant waveform, you will get pulsed waveform like this. So, if I goes on increasing the phi from 0 to pi, the DC voltage will increases. After pi again, the DC voltage decreases up to 2 pi and the same cycle will repeats. And if I assume that the maximum DC voltage is VCC and if the VCC is 5 volts then what is the conversion factor of this phase detector is the output by input. For a 0 to pi phase difference you are getting the output voltage of 5 volts. So, k phi is defined as phi by pi volts per radian. So, this is the exclusion or based phase detector and uh, the DC output voltage can be maximum VCC at phi is equal to pi. But what is desired in the phase detectors is this uh, linear variation between the phi and the DC voltage has to be extended over a long range. So, if you want to extend this linear range from 0 to 2 pi instead of having 0 to pi, we can use an edge triggered SR flip flap based phase detector. So, we can see that here this edge triggered SR flip-flap based phase detector will be having this phi and uh, DC output voltage uh, linear relation up to 0 to 2 pi. This is one advantage. Another advantage is instead of taking this uh, FS and F naught square waves, we can take rectangular wave. That means, square wave is having duty cycle of 50 percent, whereas rectangular wave will be having duty cycle less than 50 percent. So, because of this you can increase the linear range. How this linear range will be increased? We can study through this uh, circuit. This is yes, R flip flap this is q and q bar, this is clock and this clock is say positive edge triggered. And here f s is applied, here f naught is applied. So, what is the truth table of s r flip flap? S r q n q n plus 1. If it is 0, 0, 
previous state is 0, present state is also 0, 0, 0, 1, present state is also 1, simply present state is equal to previous state, where 0, 1 regardless of the previous state, output is equal to 1 because reset input is 1, for 1, 0 regardless of the previous state, output is equal to, this is 0 because reset input is equal to 1, this is 1 and 1 1 is not allowed. So, this table will be active at the negative edge or the positive edge, it is up to you. If I take the clock, we will be having 4 portions, this is clock. The variation from logic 0 to logic 1 is called as positive edge and this particular portion is called as positive level and the variation from logic 1 to logic 0 is called as negative edge or trailing edge and the portion where this is equal to logic 0 is called as negative level. We can design the flip flop which is sensitive to either of these uh, 4 portions. Here I am assuming that this particular flip flop is sensitive to the positive edge means whenever this S R the R input changes from 0 to 1, then only this follows this two table. In any other case during this region, during this region, simply output remains in the previous state. Now, if I apply this waveforms, say this is FS waveform, and this is F naught waveform. So, the phase difference will be now this much, this is also positive edge, this is also positive edge between two positive edges, this is the phase difference phi. So, what will be output? Q is nothing but this is output V. So, what is output V or which is equal to Q? So, at this point here, because F s is changing from 0 to 1 and F s is connected to the S input. So, S is becomes 1 and F naught is connected to R. So, here this R is equal to 0, S is equal to 1, R is equal to 0, this makes output is equal to 1, so output is equal to 1 here, this is either V or Q. How long this will be 1 up to this point? So, at this point, this is the R input because F naught is connected to R. So, R becomes 1, but whereas here S is 0. So, S is equal to 0, R is equal to 1 means output is 0. So, this becomes 0. And again at the second positive edge of this F S, this becomes high. Second positive edge of F naught, it becomes 0. third positive edge, it becomes again 1 and so on. Now, this is 0, total this is 1 time period 2 pi, which is 4 pi and so on. Suppose, if this phase angle is 0, so this is a ambiguity state. So, if you increase this phase angle from 0 towards 2 pi, now this much is the output voltage for this phase angle. If you decrease the phase angle, instead of this, if I take the phase angle as this, then this portion also will decreases. If you increase, this will increase until this 2 pi. 
So, when uh, phase angle phi is equal to 2 pi, what happens? You will get this as a maximum DC signal. So, if I plot this relation here, now this will be 0 to 2 pi, it will reach the maximum. So, this is the difference between this exclusion R based and SRP flap based. So, this is having more linear range, so this is a better phase detector. And if you want to increase this range further, you can have up to 0 to 4 pi linear range, for that you can use the phase detector IC such as MC4344. R4044. This is a direct IC which performs the phase detection, but the linear range will be more when compared with exclusion or gate based uh, phase detector and SR uh, flip flap based phase detector. So, this is the phase detector, this is one of the important block of the phase lock loop. So, what are the other blocks of the phase lock loop? As you have discussed in the earlier lecture, this is the phase detector which compares the frequency and phase of the input signal and VCO output and generates the error signal. This will be passed through the low pass filter so that you will get the DC signal that will be amplified by error amplifier. then it will be applied to the voltage control oscillator whose frequency varies with input DC voltage. Voltage control oscillator, here this is the final output and a part of this output will be fed back to the phase detector. Now, we have discussed about this phase detector and low pass filter we have already discussed in the earlier lectures, how to design the low pass filter using Butterworth approximation and amplifiers also we already discussed in the earlier lectures. Now, another important block is VCO. So, now we will discuss about the voltage controlled oscillator. So, the input for this one is DC control voltage, output is a waveform whose frequency varies with this DC voltage. If I call this DC voltage as VC, frequency as F naught, F naught is proportional to the VC. Okay. So, and what is the relation between F naught and VC? In order to derive this relation, we will consider the block diagram of VCO which is available in the IC form of NERAC. 566. This is a, an IC which uh, performs this uh, VCO operation. If you consider the block diagram of this VCO which is NE slash SC566. This is the block diagram of VCO. You can see that there are different blocks one is constant current as source or this can be sync also and there is a smith trigger then buffer amplifiers these are internal to this IC external we have one resistor R1 resistor R1 capacitor C1 and there is a provision to apply the modulation input and this is V plus which is nothing but VCC and this is ground point. So, before going to explain the operation of this VCO, I will uh, first uh, revise the operation of the Smith trigger because the main uh, building block of this VCO is Smith trigger. So, in the uh, previous uh, lectures, we have discussed about the Smith trigger circuit. This is the circuit diagram of a Smith trigger. Here, the input voltage VA is applied 
and here the output voltage V0 is taken, a part of this output voltage will be fed back to the input. This is V reference R1, R2. And this will be having plus V sat minus V sat. So, the output of this one swings between this plus V sat and minus V sat. Minus V sat depends upon the voltage at input and voltage at the inverting terminal. And we have derived the expression for the upper trigger point and lower trigger point. V u t we have defined as V reference into R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 plus V sat into R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. Assuming that this V naught swings between minus V sat to plus V sat and V L T we have defined as the lower trigger point the same expression here but minus sign. The Smith trigger which is present inside this V C O we are going to design to swing between VCC and 0.5 VCC. That is in this expressions minus V sat will be the lower value that lower value here is 0.5 VCC. The highest value is VCC so that will be plus V sat. And inside this mid trigger we are going to choose R1 is equal to R2. So, with this assumptions what is V U T and the V reference also 0 inside this. So, this will be 0 plus V sat becomes V C C and to R 2 is equal to R 1 means this becomes half. So, this is equal to 0.5 V C C. V L T becomes the first term is 0 because V reference is 0 minus of V sat becomes 0.5 V C C into R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 because R 1 is equal to R 2 it will be 1 by 2. This becomes 0.25 V C C. So, the upper trigger point is 0.5 V C C lower trigger point is 0.25 V C C and the operation of this Smith trigger is if uh, the input voltage V i is greater than V u t, the output voltage V naught becomes this is minus V sat. Here minus V sat is 0.5 V c c. If V i is less than V L T, V naught is plus V sat. So, in this I C we have plus V sat as V C C. So, now if I discuss the operation of this V C O, there is an external capacitor which is connected at the seventh point and one is grounded. So, this in the IC form if we take this in IC form this is an 8 pin IC 566 the first pin is ground. So, this is connected to the ground second pin is no connection. So, here 
2 is not there. Third one will be the point where square wave is generated. You can see that at third point square wave is generated. Fourth pin triangular wave is generated. Fifth pin is modulating input. This sixth pin will be R one. This external resistor we are going to connect. Seventh pin is C one. This external capacitor we have to connect. And eighth pin is VCC. Now this capacitor is charged or discharged by using a constant current source. or it can be sink. So, whenever this capacitor charges this will act as a source, whenever the capacitor discharges this will act as a sink, but this will provide the constant current. If constant current is provided if I assume that this voltage is V 1. So, what is the expression for the voltage across the capacitor 1 by C integral I d t. If this current supplied by this constant current source is constant say i capital i this you can take outside the integration i is the constant current supplied by this constant current source integral of dt so this becomes i by c t that is the voltage across the capacitor increases linearly it will charges linearly as well as discharges linearly but uh, what are these points what is the lowest voltage, what is the highest voltage. This depends upon the V u t and V l t. So, if I plot this uh, voltage across the capacitor and uh, voltage at the output of the Smith trigger, it will be something like this. This is V 1 voltage across the capacitor. So, this will increases linearly and decreases linearly because of the constant current. This is the type of waveform we will get across the capacitor. And uh, what is the condition for this Smith trigger? If V i is greater than V u t which is nothing but 0.5 V c c output is 0.5 V c c and V i is less than V l t which is 0.25 V c c V naught is plus V c c. So, here if this capacitor voltage you have the two limits one is upper trigger point another is lower trigger point this will be access lower trigger point of Smith trigger which is 0.25 VCC and this is upper trigger point 0.5 VCC. So, whenever the capacitor charges, if it charges to a value which is slightly more than the upper trigger point of this uh, Smith trigger, then what will be the output? 0.5 VCC. So, here this was VCC and here this becomes 0.5 VCC. So, from here what happens is because this output of the speed trigger will be 0.5 VCC. So, it causes the capacitor to discharge. This is discharging path. Whenever this capacitor voltage discharges to a value which is equal to 0.25 VCC, which is VLT, if it is slightly less than VLT, what will be the output? If it is slightly less than VLT, output is VCC. So, this mid trigger output becomes VCC. Similarly, again, the same cycle will repeat. 
So these are the waveforms at the input and output of Smith trigger. The input waveform is nothing but the voltage across the capacitor which is a triangular wave. Of course we require the buffers and here this is a rectangular wave. This is now what is the frequency of this signals? As the name implies voltage control oscillator this frequency has to vary with the input voltage. So, in order to derive the expression for the frequency, if I assume that this is the time period of either triangular wave or square wave, voltage across uh, the capacitor V1 is given by C into dV1 by dt, V1 is the voltage across the capacitor. So, this can be written as C delta V1 by delta t. So, what is delta v1? The change from here to here. Here this is 0.25 vcc, here 0.5 vcc and this is v1 waveform. So, delta v1 will be the highest value which is 0.5 vcc minus the lowest value 0.25 vcc. this will be 0.25 VCC. This is equal to 0.25 VCC into C divided by delta T. So, this is the voltage change from here to here we are calling as delta V and the corresponding time change also we can call as delta T. Then what is the relation between the capital T and delta T? This is twice delta T this is another delta t. So, capital T the period of either triangular wave or square wave is equal to twice delta t or if I call as frequency f naught as 1 by t frequency of either triangular or square wave is equal to 1 over 2 delta t. So, from here what is delta t? Point two five VCC into C divided by V one. So this is I current. Current through the capacitor IC. I is equal to C into dV by dt. This is current IC. But what is IC? IC is this current which will be supplied to this one. So, this 5 is at voltage of V c, 6 is also at voltage of V c because there is a capacitor connected between the 5 and 6. We are going to connect a capacitor uh, between the 5 and uh, c externally that I am going to discuss later. Okay. So, the voltage at 5 and 6 will be same. So, this is V c and this is V c c. This current is I c. So, I c can be written as V c c minus V c divided by R 1. So, delta t is equal to from here 0.25 V c c into c divided by I becomes V c c minus V c divided by R 1 and this is of course C1 because we are using the notation C1 and R1. So, implies this is equal to 0.25 R1 C1 Vcc divided by Vcc minus Vc. This is delta T and uh, what is F 1 by 2 delta T? 1 by twice delta t 2 into 0.25 into r1 c1 vcc divided by vcc minus vc that goes to the numerator. This is the expression for the frequency of vco 0.25 into 2 becomes 5 0.5 
So, we can see that uh, this F naught can be varied by varying either you can vary V c, V c is constant, V c is variable or you can vary the external resistance R 1 or you can uh, vary external capacitance C 1. So, if I want to operate this V c o over a some operating range, say so, this is the operating range of V c o. When this modulating input V c is equal to 0, whatever the frequency that you are going to get, you call this one as say F c dash, this is free running frequency. when this is 0 that normally will set in the center this is free running frequency. Then by changing this V c we can change this F naught dash in either directions. So, it can be shown that if uh, V c changes from 0.75 VCC to VCC. The operating range changes by tenfold 1 to 10. So, like that by changing the VC we can change the frequency of the VCO keeping this R 1 and C 1 as constant. Then how to change this uh, V c say from 0.75 V c c to V c c. For that uh, we need to connect uh, two more uh, resistors at the modulating uh, voltage and the complete circuitry which is uh, required to generate the triangular and the square wave at the output of the V c o whose frequency where is with the V c, this V c is this one, is this R 1 and R 2 we are going to connect here. And uh, as I have told 5 and 6 will be, this is the 5 point and this is 6 point only capacitor is connected between these two. This is used to avoid the oscillations. Using this R1, R2, and R3, this R1 is of course we are going to fix R1 and R2 by varying this R2 and R3. We can vary the VC. If VC varies, frequency of this uh, square wave and triangular wave also varies. So, this circuitry is used to generate this square and a triangular wave whose frequency varies with the input modulating voltage VC. So, this will be varied by using R 2 and R 3. So, this is about the uh, V c o operation. So, with this uh, knowledge of the all the blocks of P L L, so we will consider the complete P L L circuit in the next lecture. Thank you.